Mariko Morioka, a 30-year-old self-proclaimed elite neat, returns home with a bouquet after her last day of work. She tosses the flowers in the trash and tiredly flops onto the bed, falling asleep. The next morning, she jolts awake to her alarm but realizes it's her day off. She cleans her rug and turns on the computer to play an MORPG named Nantar SG, but her account is terminated due to inactivity. Mariko smiles, remembering her online friend and searches for other MMO games. Becoming intrigued by the game Fruits de Mer, she installs it and creates a male character, Hayashi. The first quest is to defeat defeat the boss, and get the chest. After trying multiple times and failing, Moriko stresses that it's more complicated than Nantar SG. When someone in the game expresses concern, Moriko thinks the girl is cute. The girl expresses admiration for the game before inviting Hayashi to adventure together. Moriko blushes, accepting Lily's friend request. Hayashi defeats his first monster and Lily congratulates him for leveling up. She thinks he's ready for the boss, but he gets knocked down so Lily heals him until they win. Moriko thanks Lily and Hayashi obtains a rare silver sword. Opening the chest, he finds golden bracelets like Lily's. They both blush and then laugh. They play daily until Hayashi reaches level 80. While playing underwater, it snows as Christmas decorations appear, an in-game festivity. Moriko then comes up with a secret plan and starts avoiding Lily as he makes excuses to go elsewhere. At the tavern, Hayashi chats with online guild friends. Poco is at a net cafe during a break from his long commute, making Himera Ruta suggest he go home as someone might be waiting for him. Their guildmaster, Kanbi, recalls when Hayashi would die from weak enemies and mix up his controls when he was still a beginner. Hayashi thanks them for their guidance and they continue drinking. Himera Ruta approaches Lily, alone, who opens up feeling at home with Hayashi, but he's been distant. So Himera Ruta privately tells Kanbi to help fix the issue. Kanbi invites Hayashi to adventure together to ask about him and Lily. Though romance is prohibited in the guild, he advises Hayashi to remain a good game friend to Lily, who only wants to enjoy the game. Kanbi mentions that people sometimes hide their true gender in online games, making Moriko tense. So, Hayashi reveals his plan of gifting Lily a rare crystal rose for Christmas as a token of appreciation. Despite his low level, he wants to obtain it alone. Suddenly, a powerful boss appears, attacking them. Afterward, Hayashi approaches Lily who worries about his beaten appearance. She heals him, then asks if she's been a bother, shocking Hayashi. Moriko is at a loss for words. Hayashi invites her to Christmas Eve together as he's going to give her something, and Lily accepts, relieving Moriko. On Christmas Eve, Homare invites his co-worker Yuta to a drink, but he declines since he already has Plans. While Moriko buys food at the convenience store, she encounters Yuta when they both request to buy the last piece of chicken. After hearing her stomach rumble, Yuta lets her buy it instead. Moriko quickly runs home embarrassed after paying for her food. Hayashi waits for Lily who surprises him with a hug. Moriko finds her extremely cute, and Lily gifts Hayashi a dye he can use on gear. He expresses gratitude and then gives her a mini rose brooch. Lily is overjoyed and they greet each other with a Merry Christmas. After playing, Yuta exits the game. Leaving the store, Moriko excitedly plans her next game mission when the clerk, Kazuomi Fujimoto, who's Kanbei in Fruits de Mer, chases her to return her forgotten groceries. They're double bagged to prevent spills as he observed her habit of buying many items. He spots her Fruit de Mer points card, but the manager interrupts before he can ask if she plays the game. Moriko appreciates his kindness and goes home to continue gaming. In Fruits de Mer, Hayashi, alongside his guild member Lilac, defeats a boss. As they explore further, Lilac, with a grin, surprises Moriko by asking if she's a neat. Given Hayashi's constant online presence, the shock comes when Lilac questions if he's a university student, revealing her observations about guild members' playtime habits. Lilac guesses they're both 21 and a college student, surprising Moriko by her youth. Hayashi bluffs that she's right, delighting Lilac. Moriko then cleans her rug to ease her guilt. At the beach with Lily, Hayashi's surprised to learn the guild knows about his college student status. Everyone thought Hayashi was older, leaving Mariko flabbergasted. She accidentally wonders about Lily's age, causing tension and crying when Lily jokes about keeping private matters to themselves. Lily comforts him, then decides to share some personal info. However, Mariko decides not to hear as she's uncomfortable sharing information herself. Lily recognizes Hayashi's kindness, and they promise to reveal their secrets in the future. Subsequently, Lily shares how the guild almost disbanded due to the previous guildmaster leaving for a job overseas. He wanted to disband it since they couldn't recruit new members, but Kanbi disagreed. He took the authority to prevent disbandment, stating it was wasteful for a max-leveled guild. Though Lily suspected his real motive was to keep their less active friends, Moriko is shocked to see it's 5 a.m. and realizes Lily has work soon. Lily panics, and they both resolve to stay up all night. Later, Moriko falls asleep on her table and wakes with a fever. On her way to buy medicine, Yuta accidentally elbows her in a rush to the office. Unconscious, Moriko has a nightmare and wakes teary-eyed in the hospital, noticing Yuta dozing off. Moriko wonders about the hand some stranger who awakes from her coughing. Yuta advises her to be careful with her arm's IV drip and apologizes for the incident. He offers to cover her medical expenses, gives his contact info, 
and introduces himself as Yuta Sakurai. Moriko thanks him and also introduces herself before parting ways. Then Yuta realizes her name matches one on his work distribution list. At night, the guild members notice Hayashi's somber mood. Kanbi assures that they'll listen to his problems while teasing Lilac. Moriko becomes teary-eyed and shares her encounter with Yuta, pretending Yuta is a girl. The members get excited, assuming it's a romantic story, and offer love advice. Kanbi suggests being straightforward with contacting Yuta to express gratitude. So, Moriko goes AFK to nervously email Yuta, who smiles and quickly replies while dining with Homare. Moriko returns to the game, causing concern, as Yuta replies immediately and invites her to dinner. Himera, Ruta, and Lilac become excited again. As an introvert, Moriko dreads the invitation due to her appearance. In their usual spot, Lily notices Hayashi's gloom and shares that she visits when feeling tired or down. Moriko feels a warm connection with Lily, who asks to vent to her sometimes and they promise to rely on each other. After playing, Moriko appreciates the kind people around her and decides to respond to Yuta. However, she panics realizing it's already 2 a.m. Yuta jolts awake to see Moriko's reply to his email. He dines with Homare at an all-you-can-eat meat restaurant where he asks if Homare knows Moriko Morioka. Homare recognizes her as Morimori-chan from their time working at Matsukaze Busan in the distribution systems department. The strange nickname puzzling Yuta. Yuta notices Moriko was exceptionally good at her job looking at a manual she wrote, and Homare agrees. While they weren't close, Homare mentions that he used to contact Moriko when she covered for her department. Homare recalls working late in the office with Moriko's help on documents. He noticed her exhaustion, leading to Moriko apologizing and crying. He comforted her and started calling her Morimori ever since. Homare shows Yuta a picture of them together, and Yuta blushes, confirming Moriko's identity. He drops his chopsticks in jealousy when Homare plans to meet her again, and they argue when Yuta drops his new set of chopsticks. After dinner, Homare buys coffee, and Yuta returns to the office alone. He reads Moriko's reply, saying she doesn't want to celebrate her recovery with dinner to avoid inconveniencing him. That night, Moriko walks to the store, reflecting on recent events. Kazuomi notices her gloomy mood, but she lightens up grabbing a Fruits de Mer points card and approaches Kazuomi at the counter. He refrains from asking if she plays the game due to other customers waiting. Moriko rushes home to play, chugging down a drink before heading to her computer. Inside the game, Hayashi feels refreshed. Hayashi spots Poco, who assumes his problem is resolved from his bright mood. Hayashi feels exposed by Lily spreading his secret, but Poco assures him that everyone is just concerned for him. The members fear Hayashi will play less due to real-life conflicts, but he explains that gaming is his coping mechanism for problems. He expresses gratitude and receives an expensive cape from Lily, shocking Moriko. Hayashi feels indebted to Lily, thinking that a man should make more effort, making Poco cringe. Moriko frets about not being able to give Lily a valuable item, so Poco shares that Nico, their guildmate, once gave him a powerful weapon. Ever since, Poco would find ways to thank her every time she'd help him, assuring Hayashi that Lily is the same. He suggests focusing on Lily's ulterior motives, making Moriko anxious. She tries to distract herself with other activities, but can't stop thinking about it. Hayashi meets Lily at the tree to return the cape, curious about her motives. Lily is stunned as he feels bad for having nothing to give in return. So Lily reveals that she received numerous requests to hunt with others when she first started playing and used to only group with people who had similar goals. She gained more friends after joining a guild, but her popularity caused trouble in keeping social relationships. Despite everything she went through, she continues to play as she longs to meet someone similar to her old online friend, and Hayashi admits the same. Kanbi suggested she call him her partner, so she could finally avoid being bothered by others, thus Lily's gratefulness to him. She became afraid to get too close to others, but after meeting Hayashi, she enjoyed the game more. Lily invites him to be her partner, and Moriko can't control her racing heart. She wonders about having a crush on Lily, but did denies romance because Lily is a girl. They both wear their capes as Hayashi accepts the invitation, and the guild members discreetly confirm Lily's ulterior motives. Moriko stays overwhelmed, while Yuta stares speechless at their conversation. Moriko excitedly browses the campaign and new loot boxes in Fruits de Mer, but refrains from splurging on valuable items. Thinking of Lily, she eventually buys a few. Meanwhile, Lilac, Yuka in real life, is certain that Lily will also buy loot boxes. She's jealous of Lily and Hayashi's partnership, and wonders about Kanbi's thoughts. At the store, Kazumi Kazuomi learns that Furuya will cover his next shift for his job interview. If he passes, he'll have to quit, and the manager jokingly wishes for his failure so he can keep working there. Kazuomi is reminded to turn off the electric money machine for maintenance, though they don't announce it since only Moriko and he use it. Coincidentally, Moriko enters the store, giggling at mushrooms that resemble Lily, creeping Kazuomi out. She purchases a Fruits de Mer points card, but the machine is under maintenance. Kazuomi claims it'll be running shortly, so she waits. Kazuomi surprises her by revealing he plays the game too, and 
and excitedly talks about the new loot boxes. But before Mariko can respond, a customer cuts in line. She rushes out, and Kazuomi invites her to return. Mariko is overwhelmed, but happy to finally discuss MMOs with someone in real life. Later, Hayashi and Kanbei catch Lilac eavesdropping as they discuss the loot boxes. Lilac reveals her new tunic from the loot boxes, sparking an argument with Kanbei teasing her for splurging. Mariko laughs, and Poco joins the game. He compliments her tunic, but Lilac is irritated because Poco spawns in her spot, covering her tunic. Hayashi hopes to win a great prize, but the members warn him about the greed sensor, which brings a player bad luck when too greedy. Hayashi despairs and Lilac comforts him. Lily arrives excited to spin the loot boxes, so Mariko prepares for her first draw. Hayashi is disappointed with healing potions, but tries again after the members' support. While the others obtain good items, Hayashi keeps getting healing potions. Eventually, he wins two top prizes, and Lily completes her collection, confident in always getting what she wants by buying more. Lily and Lilac plan to dye their tunics, and Kanbi repeatedly criticizes Lilac's girly choices that he thinks don't suit her. Later, Poco's character, currently played by Himera Ruta, scolds Kanbi for being mean to Lilac who wore her normal clothes. However, in truth, Lilac chose to because Kanbi said he liked them more. At a restaurant, Homari confirms that Yuta has feelings for Moriko, which Yuta denies. However, Homari has observed Yuta constantly checking his phone for messages during work, and making frequent visits to the convenience store to see her. Still, Yuta wants a reason to email Moriko. That night, Homari visits the store to find Moriko, whom he encounters at the door as he leaves. Initially, he doesn't recognize her but returns beside Moriko when he realizes it's her. Kazuomi wonders if Homari is flirting when he starts a conversation, knowing her full name which frightens her. Moriko smiles realizing he's Homare, but is embarrassed about her unemployment. Homari invites Moriko to drink over the weekend, and she reluctantly accepts. The next day, Homari brags to Yuta about getting Moriko's contact info and their date plans, sparking Yuta's jealousy. Later, Yuta logs into Fruits de Mer where Hayashi shares his hospital incident, changing Yuta's gender into a girl. He mentions declining her her dinner invitation, but agreeing to drink with an old friend from work, referring to Homari as a girl. Yuta is taken aback, suspecting that Hayashi is Moriko hiding her true gender. Yuta connects the dots between Homari and Hayashi's stories, bluffing about being AFK due to a coffee spill. He acts normally as Lily, brushing off his unlikely suspicions. The next day at work, Homari boasts about getting Moriko's contact info, but Yuta, aware she's Hayashi, believes he pressured her into the date. Homari invites him to join, but Yuta refuses to be a bother, so Homari reveals he planned everything for him, despite Moriko's cluelessness. Moriko buys beauty products at the store, worried about her appearance for her outing with Homare. At the counter, Kazuomi introduces himself, and she reciprocates formally, despite being older, amusing him. Kazuomi suggests they play together sometime, but Moriko hesitates due to her online gender. Eventually, she agrees, however, she's speechless when Kazuomi reveals his in-game name. In the game, Hayashi hides, feeling anxious about his online life. Lilac joins him, sharing that she'll hunt with a classmate who pretends to be a guy online, reminding Moriko of her situation. Kanbei arrives, suggesting they converse privately, making Hayashi tense. Aware of Hayashi's true identity, Kanbei playfully suggests Lilac's acceptance of different online genders, and she agrees, misunderstanding Hayashi's intentions before leaving. Afterward, Kanbei calls him Moriko in the game, which Hayashi disallows. Kanbei realizes he was lying because he's truly a neat in her 30s, who's embarrassed to reveal her true identity. Hayashi apologizes, and Kanbi reassures her it's okay, making Moriko emotional. Hayashi plans to reveal his identity to Lily as her partner, wondering if she'd feel relieved to know he's a woman. Kanbi suggests he can choose not to tell her if he prefers, but advises refraining from seeking real-life advice from Lily. They then agree to keep their identities hidden. Later, Moriko worries about her eye bags and struggles to choose an outfit for the upcoming date. She decides to ask Lily for help despite Kanbei's advice, mentioning her date is tomorrow. Yuta, aware Aware of Hamare's business trip the next day, wonders if he isn't Moriko after all, and suggests clothing, but is puzzled when Hayashi asks what a woman would wear. Suddenly Kanbei joins the conversation, making Hayashi uneasy. He asks Lily what she'd wear, and Hayashi appreciates his assistance. Kazuomi sighs seeing Moriko seek real-life advice again, and Lily whispers to him that she can't reveal her true identity as a guy. So, he instructs her to just answer the question. Lily suggests an outfit, and Kanbei asks about a hairstyle. They argue about short versus long hair, making Moriko feel guilty for neglecting her long hair which Lily prefers. At the hair salon, Moriko's hairdresser is Yuka, who suggests various hair length. Moriko chooses medium length, realizing the cost could have bought 11 loot boxes in the game. Afterward, she calculates clothing prices in loot boxes and purchases 
makeup. At the office, Yuta realizes that Homari arranged for him to go on the date with Moriko instead, as Homari won't be back from his business trip until the next day. Meanwhile, Moriko struggles with her makeup, and Yuta finds Hayashi offline in Fruits de Mer. She arrives early at the station while Yuta plays with guild members after work. Kanbi mentions Hayashi's outing, thus his offline status, making Lily anxious. Moriko continues to wait, while Yuta remains in denial about her identity. Seeing the time, he impulsively logs out to meet Moriko, leaving the other members hanging. After an hour of waiting, Moriko becomes anxious. Yuta arrives speechless at her appearance as she leaves. So he follows and calls her name, and Moriko is puzzled to see him. Yuta reveals he and Homari are co-workers when Homari calls Moriko during his business trip. Moriko mistakenly thought their get-together was that day, not the next. She's embarrassed, and Homari teases her for being excited. When she mentions Yuta's presence, Homari talks to him on loudspeaker, and asks if Moriko is cute, flustering her. Surprisingly, Yuta admits she's cute, but then claims she's Homari's type. Privately, Homari suggests Moriko enjoy the night with Yuta, to make up for turning him down before. So, Moriko awkwardly invites him out, and they head to a restaurant for drinks. She asks how Yuta knew about her mix-up, and he recalls his conversation with Hayashi, bluffing that he heard she was going out for drinks, and coincidentally saw her on his way home from work. Both knowing Homare, they find it a strange coincidence. Moriko apologizes again for bothering him previously, and Yuta dismisses it as a minor chicken incident, surprising Moriko who doesn't remember what happened at the store. After dinner, Yuta buys water to help her sober up. They fluster when he invites her to a walk, and Moriko accepts. Yuta accompanies her home, and she expresses gratitude, which makes Yuta call her very kind hearted. This phrase reminds Mariko of Lily's compliments. She then mentions she would have enjoyed her job more if she was with co-workers like him and Homari. Yuta appreciates Homari's friendship despite his playful nature, making Mariko anticipate her upcoming meeting with Homari. They both enjoyed the night, and Yuta informed Homari that he wouldn't join their outing the next day. The next day, the guild assumes Hayashi is offline due to a hangover. Yuta feels down for letting Mariko go out with Homari. Mariko waits at the station, and Homari apologizes for rescheduling their outing, surprising her by suddenly appearing. He calls her cute and presents a souvenir. As they walk to the restaurant, Moriko blushes when Homari switches to her side of the sidewalk. He asks if she went out with Yuta the previous night, further flustering her. At the restaurant, Homari attributes Yuta's coincidental sighting of Moriko to the power of love. She denies it, laughing, convinced that Yuta wouldn't be interested in a woman in her 30s. However, Homari reveals Yuta is 28 and finds her attractive. They order food and wine and discuss Yuta. Moriko tells Homari about fruits de mer, sharing that the best part is making friends with strangers. She admits to asking her online friends for advice about their outings. One suggested long hair, the other suggested short, so she opted for medium length, making Homare laugh. She blushes when he compliments her appearance, and her vision blurs after drinking too much. Homare returns from the bathroom to find her asleep. Meanwhile, the guild notices Lily's unusualness, assuming something's wrong. Yuta struggles to concentrate, and Homare sends a picture of Mariko sleeping, joking about taking her home with him. Yuta panics and quickly exits the game, making Kazuomi suspicious. At the restaurant, Homari teases Yuta and questions why he was at the station the previous night, even though it's not his usual commute. Despite recalling his times with Moriko in the game, Yuta claims it was a coincidence, and Homari gives him a souvenir. Meanwhile, Moriko returns home and washes her face while reflecting on her luck with men recently. She's overjoyed to finally log into the game again. Hayashi finds Lily offline, so he plans to see the others when Lily appears excited to see him. He claims enjoying his night out, and Yuta is happy that Moriko had fun. Moriko becomes excited when Lily finally logs logs into the game and greets the members. She plans to sort her avatar outfits in her storage, and the members, including Hayashi, want to see her clothes. Yuta blushes, and then shows them a bunny outfit, which Moriko thinks is cute. Lilac feels envious of Lily's money to buy outfits, and Lily puts her hair ribbon onto Himeruda. Hayashi regrets his character's short hairstyle, and imagines Kanbi changing his long hair, making Yuta laugh. At night, Lily walks with Hayashi, and Yuta feels nervous. At their usual spot, Hayashi expresses gratitude for her advice and mentions messing up a get-together day. Yuta, pretending not to know, decides to avoid Moriko, despite Homari's advice. When Hayashi calls Yuta a wonderful person, Yuta blushes. Moriko is happy because Lily reminded her of Yuta, but Yuta wonders if she realized Lily's true identity. Despite enjoying hearing Moriko's stories, Yuta feels guilty. The next day, Homari downloads Fruits de Mer and invites Yuta, but Yuta has work, so he calls Moriko for game advice. Moriko gets excited, but feels embarrassed about her online persona as a guy. Homari installs the game, promising to contact her later. Moriko decides not to mention Homari to Kanbe, planning for a brief gaming session without involving guild members. After logging out, Nico surprises Kanbe by logging in on a weekend. Moriko creates a new character named Molly, resembling her previous MMO character. Nico, frustrated with work, yearns to be a neat who plays MMOs full-time. Moriko waits in the starting town with her new character for Homari. Meanwhile, Nico spots a unique character in the town and tells Kanbe to check it out. Homari texts 
Kamare, revealing his new buff and busty character, Harumi, leaving Moriko speechless at his appearance. She suggests grouping up for private chats, and Hamare agrees. Moriko spots Kanbei and Nico but feels safe using her different character. Nico interrupts to teach Hamare how to use party chat, making Moriko uncomfortable. Hamare thanks Nico and Kanbei realize that Molly, Moriko, isn't a newbie. Hamare introduces himself, unsettling Moriko. At night, Yuta returns home from work and finds a message from Hamare who downloaded Fruits de Mer. He wonders if Moriko invited Hamare and if they're getting closer. He sees Moriko's character picture, recognizing it from someone he knew long ago. So Yuta calls Hamare, leading him to be AFK while playing with Moriko and Kanbei. Kazuomi, upon seeing Harumi's character, suspects it might be Hamare, the man he saw with Moriko at the store. Harumi returns, and they continue playing. Yuta feels jealous of them despite his initial intention of being someone else in MMOs. Yuta can't help but see Yuki, his previous online friend, in Moriko. He recalls Yuki's desire to quit her job in their previous MMO, but denies that Yuki is Moriko. He creates a new male character in the game while Homare surprises Moriko by mentioning his friend, Yuta, joining the game. Yuta stares at Moriko's new character, sure that he's seen the character from a long time ago. The time when he met his previous MMO friend was a hard time for him, as his parents passed away. Growing up, he was bullied for being adopted. Still, he loved his not-biological parents unconditionally. He moved out a few months after to a smaller room because he felt lonely in the large, empty house. Ever since MMOs have become his comfort zone, since he could play with people who are far away. One night, he met Yuki, a beginner in the game. He introduced himself as Hearth, and they became friends. Since Yuki worked full-time, they'd only play together on weekends. Yuta recalls the last time he saw her when she opened up about wanting to leave her job. Presently, Yuta finishes creating his new character, and the guild members find Harumi AFK again after becoming level 8. He returns to announce that his friend wants to meet them. Yuta arrives, and Moriko thinks his character looks cool. He introduces himself as Hearth, but feels disappointed when Moriko doesn't recognize his name. At night, Moriko walks with Hearth, struggling to pronounce his name. She discovers he's an experienced MMO player, and Yuta reveals his love for MMOs. He mentions playing a game in the past, surprising Mariko. Awkwardly, she asks how to pronounce his name, and he teaches her, leaving her speechless. The memory of playing Nantar SG with the in-game name Yuki comes back, where she fell in love with her online friend Hearth. In the present, Harumi falls asleep, leaving the game, and Molly and Hearth return to the others. Hearth expresses gratitude while Mariko fails to ask him about his name. Before she can say more, Yuta logs out. Mariko remembers her old friend Hearth being a student at the time and blushes, daydreaming that Hearth is Yuta. She hesitates before calling Yuta to ask if he knows a character named Yuki in Nantaris G. He says yes and greets her, calling her Yuki, which flusters Moriko. Moriko reveals she enjoyed their connection during Nantaris G and expresses happiness for being able to play with him again. Seeing her excitement, Yuta can't help but feel guilty and wants to reveal his identity as Lily in Fruits de Mer. Moriko wonders if he was disappointed to find out she was Yuki, but Yuta admires her personality. He confesses to being Lily, however, his phone dies, ending the call. Moriko, unaware of his confession, messages him to express gratitude. The next morning, Yuta realizes she didn't hear the confession seeing her email. At night, he looks for a hangover preventative at the convenience store, where the store manager recognizes him. Walking home, he encounters Moriko, who becomes embarrassed by her lazy appearance without makeup. She's further embarrassed when Yuta hears her stomach rumble, so Yuta hands her some bread he bought from the store, and they talk on a nearby bench. He recalls the chicken incident, and Moriko realizes that he's only ever seen her embarrassing moments. Yuta calls her kind-hearted, making Moriko reveal that apart from him, there's another person who also calls her that. She introduces him to Lily, an online friend who usually cheers her up. Moriko rambles about her admiration for Lily, sharing that Yuta resembles her as he makes her feel the same way Lily does. She looks forward to playing with Yuta and Lily on her main account, but her excitement dies down when Yuta claims it's impossible, so Yuta stands up and confesses that he's Lily. Moriko takes a shower at Yuta's home, overwhelmed by how she ended up in that situation. She recalls the previous night when Yuta confessed to being Lily, and she realized he was both Hearth and Lily. Yuta apologized as he never intended to mock her, and Moriko asked when he found out about her being Hayashi, so he confessed to having started wondering when he talked to Hayashi as Lily. Yuta confirmed it after the night he found her at the station. Moriko wondered what she would have done if she were in his place, thinking she wouldn't have rushed to him like he did to avoid damaging their relationship. Yuta admitted to feeling comfortable whenever they played together and thanked her, suddenly claiming he'd quit Fruits de Mer. So Moriko stopped him and apologized for lying about her gender. Since they're partners in the game, she requested he doesn't quit, making Yuta happy. They parted 
ways, and Moriko returned shortly to ask for help with a quest in his free time. Yuta claimed to try his best to play on Saturday before going home. The next night, Moriko played with the guild members and noticed that Yuta hadn't logged in for days. She felt lonely and wondered why, but refused to contact him. Kanbei got mad at her for spacing out during their battle, and he and Poco confirmed that something was bothering Hayashi. They offered to listen any time, wondering if the problem was about Lily not logging in. Meanwhile, Yuta drank with Homare, still feeling conflicted. Homare noticed his glumness, so he invited him to play Fruits de Mer again sometime and asked about his problem. Yuta revealed getting rejected. Moriko slept on her desk Top, jolting awake to her phone's notification. Homari emailed to talk to her about something the next day. The following day, Yuta woke up with a hangover. Unable to remember how he got home, he found a note on the table from Homari, telling him to go to the park once awake. At the park, Moriko noticed Homari's lateness. Meanwhile, Yuta called Homari to ask about what happened the previous night, but Homari only claimed he did something unusual before ending the call, leaving Yuta confused about his note. At the park, Yuta found Moriko, who was shocked to see him. They both panicked, explaining why they were there realizing that Homare set them up. Meanwhile, Homare left the park satisfied to see them together. They sat quietly, and Yuta found their situation awkward, thus his not logging into the game. Moriko's stomach rumbled, so she apologized, embarrassed. They both laughed, and Yuta suggested they grab something to eat. Walking to the store, Moriko worried about how Kazuomi, Kanbi in the game, would react to seeing them together, unsure if Yuta knew about Kazuomi. Inside, the manager assumed they were a couple. Moriko flustered, denying the assumption as she ran out of the store. Just after Yuta chased her outside, Kazuomi arrived, and the manager shared what she saw. This confuses Kazuomi as he can't place why she's been bothered. Moriko felt down, wondering if the manager couldn't believe to see her dating Yuta as he arrived. She apologized for being an embarrassment, which Yuta immediately denied. Moriko teared up, and it started raining, so Yuta gave her his jacket. He suggested they stay at his place in the meantime and eat lunch there. At Yuta's home, they both panicked at their impulsive actions and became flustered. Presently, Moriko showers while Yuta finds clothes for her to wear, awkwardly leaving them outside the bathroom door. After showering, Moriko wonders what she's doing as she wears the clothes Yuta prepared. Yuta boils water, remembering how Moriko cried earlier. He thinks that Homare would cheer her up if he were in his place. Meanwhile, Homare sneezes, wondering if Yuta is talking about him. Yuta wonders what to say, thinking about what Lily would say to Hayashi when the water finishes boiling. Moriko arrives, asking where to hang her wet clothes. Yuta blushes, seeing her in his large clothes. He notices she's barefoot and mentions leaving slippers for her before initiating to put her clothes in the dryer. However, Moriko rushes to do it herself to prevent her underwear from being seen. Afterward, Yuta gives her tea and blushes. He finds her hoodie attractive, and Moriko catches him staring. She invites him to sit on the sofa, and they engage in awkward conversation. Moriko admires Yuta's nice home and spots his computer, complimenting his pink keyboard, which reminds her of Lily. Yuta allows her to explore the computer, and their hands briefly touch when he shows her the Fruits de Mer icon, leaving them flustered. Moriko excitedly explores Lily's POV, and asks if he's ever met online friends in real life, but Yuta hasn't due to Lily's distinct character that's different from his. A sudden touch startles them both, and Moriko's stomach rumbles before they can speak. Moriko gets embarrassed while Yuta laughs and offers to cook something. Moriko joins, and they make spaghetti, which she finds delicious. Still embarrassed about her stomach rumbling, Moriko apologizes for the store incident, and offers to wash the dishes. Yuta notices that she always brings herself down, despite everyone around thinking more highly of her than she thinks. As both Lily and Yuta, he feels grateful for meeting her. However, he panics when Moriko starts crying. Unable to find a handkerchief, Yuta wipes her tears with his sleeve. Moriko had felt guilty for quitting her job and living as a neat, but Yuta's words made her happy, thus her tears. They're interrupted again when the dryer notifies them that the clothes are dry. Wearing her clothes again, Moriko thanked Yuta for his help, revealing she had fun before leaving. Shortly after, Yuta follows to accompany her home. Yuta tries to confess something, but gets interrupted by children biking nearby. He proceeds to share that he looks forward to spending more time with her, whether as their identities in the game or real life, and Moriko claims the same before they part ways. The guild defeats a boss, and the members notice that Hayashi and Lily have made up. Meanwhile, Kazuomi is still unaware of what happened. At their usual spot, Hayashi and Lily stare at the pretty moon in the real world. That night, Moriko sleeps with a smile on her face. The following day, Moriko waits for Yuta at the station but is surprised to see Homare. Yuta arrives annoyed at him as he regrets sharing their plans. Homare has work anyway, and teases them for having having a date, making them flustered before running off to work. They walk down the street seeing sweet couples, and they giggle at the sight. Moriko realizes that Yuta is willing to accept her for who she is, and wants to become something more, so that they won't feel embarrassed to be with each other. Yuta sees her zoning out, and suggests they continue walking to avoid being late. However, Moriko slips. Yuta catches her hand and they both blush, awkwardly continuing to walk while holding hands. 